its genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. It is Friday. It's not Tuesday. Um, If you remember from last week's episode, I said that my husband was not feeling well. We thought he might have COVID. Yep. Yeah, we went to the hospital on Wednesday last week, and he got the official diagnosis and tested positive. Uh, And then I hung out. Or I hung out. I held out until Saturday, and then I too tested positive. Um, we're both vaccinated and boosted. I'm very grateful for that. Don't know how much worse we'd be feeling had we not both been vaccinated and boosted. Not sure where we got it. I mean, it's just one of those things anymore, right? Um, we still try to be careful, but yeah, it, it's it's what it is. We managed to make it for over two years, and now we got it, and we're we're dealing with it. So. Uh, at any rate, that's why I'm a little more a little late this week. I'm actually trying to catch up with some of the interviews and getting them posted. Uh, I've had to reschedule a couple things because of being sick. So just you know, just hanging in there, working through stuff. But um, very grateful that Linda was able to meet with me. She's actually in Paris this week. Um, Linda Fader, I should say, my author that I'm speaking with today. Uh, She is in Paris this week, so we were almost in the same time zone, so that was kind of fun. I've been uh, five to eight hours ahead of of people since we moved to Portugal, but it was kind of fun to be almost in the same time zone. I was joking before I got COVID that I should just, clearly this means I should just fly to Paris and interview her in person. Uh, And she's been posting some beautiful pictures on Facebook of her time in Paris, so I am envious. Yeah, a little envious. I mean, I'll make it to Paris one of these days, but just kind of sighing over the the beautiful pictures that she's been posting. But at any rate, uh, Linda Fader is my guest today. We are talking about her short story collection. It's called All's Fair. Let me go ahead and give you the description of that book. In present day Southern California, a diverse group of characters seeks the fulfillment and connection this sunny state has always promised. They come with hopes for a better lifestyle, for a change of perspective, or for the dry, mild West Coast weather. A couple moves to Palm Desert from New York for the arid, warm climate a doctor prescribes, and they manage both illness and homesickness. The woman makes an unlikely friend in a young albino boy who teaches her a harsh lesson about the margin for cruelty that resides in us all. A young Mexican woman migrates to California and marries an American man, only to be deserted. A young man is disqualified from the Naval Aeronautical Program and returns to his sister's home, where he struggles with his identity and sexuality. After years of estrangement, a teenage girl travels to California from New York to spend the summer with her father. Between each of the 13 13 stories in this collection are interspersed several snapshot stories, poetic pauses that blend a set of images into an artistic visual unit, much like a brief cinematic experience. Every character in this collection is distinct from the next, but all of their stories unfold under the glare of the same Southern California sun, a western desert light so clear and unfiltered that it reveals everything. So that's the description of All's Fair and other California stories. Um, I just realized that when I was speaking with Linda, I just said All's Fair. I did not give the whole title of the book. I'm not really sure why I did not do that, but um, the the entire title is All's Fair and Other California Stories. And Linda talks a little bit about how California itself is something of a character in the all 13 stories. It's interesting to me because um, Southern California is so different from Northern California. California is such a big state and where I lived in Northern California in the Sacramento area is very, very different from the Bay Area and very different from um, Southern California. So even though California is a character in this book, it was um, 
still a bit of a mystery to me because I haven't really spent time in Southern California uh, as much as Northern California where I lived for 10 years, 12 years. Well, it depends. I lived there twice. Um, Actually, it was more than 12 years. I can't count. What can I say? Um, But still, it was fun to have California somewhere that I've lived for a large chunk of time, uh, although in a different space, but still be a character in these stories. And so anyway, let's go ahead and turn to the interview so Linda can tell you more about these short stories and about the writing of them, etc. Again, her name is Linda Fetter and uh, Fader, excuse me, and the book is All's Fair, Fair and Other California Stories. This meeting is being recorded. Hi, Linda. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Sarah. Lovely to be here. It's wonderful to have you here, and um, we're going to talk about your short story collection, All's Fair, but before we get to that, uh, if you would, wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about yourself, that would be great. Yes, so I've written a collection of short stories. Um, I, I grew up in, in Southern California in Ventura County, which is somewhere between Los Angeles and Santa Barbara and um, have a great love for for California and its inhabitants. Um, I've since moved, I've spent half my life now in New York. I live just outside of New York City, where I also have a a psychotherapy practice. I'm a a therapist and a writer. And um, let's see, I I went, I have an MA in uh, creative writing and literature from the University of Houston. I taught for a number of years, uh, composition and literature at the college level, and then went to New York University when I ended up on the East Coast um, to study for my MSW and became a psychotherapist. And um, this is my first collection of stories. I I guess I consider myself bi-coastal now. Um, And uh, it was just published last September. I also, let's see, I also have five children. I have two, two biological and three step and we're a big blended family. And, um, and that's, that's, that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, I like to travel and see them in all their different places. In fact, right now I'm in Paris where I'm visiting my son who just graduated from um, an international university. So that's been really fun. Yeah. Not a bad place to, not a a bad place to have to go, right? To visit your son. Oh, I know. Oh, darn, we have to go to Paris. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and it's great to be in your time zone now. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Um, in terms of the book, can you give um, an overview of kind of, yeah, just give an overview of the collection? Sure. So it's a collection of 13 stories. They stand alone. And I would say the one thing that links them is California. They're all set in California and um, particularly Southern California. And I would say um, they're individual stories about individual characters that I think cross the population of California. And I I think I'm interested in the people that that go there. I think California has always been this kind of shiny object to a lot of people, right? Whether they were going there for gold or, or, um, fame or whatever it was. I mean, I think California always kind of epitomize this dream in people's minds. Um, and yet, I think I was trying to highlight just the, the people who are there who maybe aren't famous or celebrities or um, have achieved great wealth, but are just trying to get by um, in, this, in this landscape that, that's pretty bright and shines the light on, on every, little, every little thing. So I think California serves as its own character in, in, the, in the collection. And um, their stories range from people as diverse as a new Mexican immigrant to maybe a young girl um, beginning to understand boys are, are moving into her friendships and the change of the focus in the friendships to um, a woman looking for fame and kind of going about it the wrong way. So a lot of different types of characters that are featured. 
Yeah. yeah. And actually now, um, that, now that I hear that you grew up in Cal or lived in California and then you moved to New York and kind of makes the first story, the first character in the first story moved from, I think it was New York, wasn't it? To, to Paul. Yes. Springs. So kind of the opposite of you. Mm hmm. Oh. Yep. That's usually the normal commute, right? I think I did the reverse commute. Yeah. <laughs> People in New York say, why did you leave California? Yeah. <laughs> this is terrible weather here. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Although it gets very hot in California. So, you know, you got to take good with bad. <laughs> yeah. um, so but would you say that California was your sort of starting place for the collection or your inspiration? What was your jumping off point? Starting place. I think I wrote some of the stories while I was still living in California and then um, continued writing about it. I think in New York, I, I, I was thinking about California a lot, particularly in the early years when I was more homesick. And um, I realized that so many of the stories were all set in California. I didn't start out writing a collection set in California, but they just all were. And at one point I sat down and looked at all the stories and thought, wow, they're all set there. I think that's the, the thematic thread and uh, put them all together in this collection. Now that you've had a chance to hear a little bit more about Linda and about this collection of short stories, let's go ahead and take our first break. When we come back, Linda will be highlighting a couple of the stories from that collection. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere where you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Linda Fader about her short story collection, All's Fair and Other California Stories. Let's go ahead and return now to that interview. Are there one or two stories that you would like to highlight or um, in particular? Well, yeah, sure. The, the title story that you mentioned, All's Fair, is fun because it, it is the normal commute, people coming for the weather in this case. Joyce is coming to live in Palm Desert for the arid climate. It's, you know, it is like a desert there near Palm Springs um, because her husband of many years is starting to fail due to an illness and the doctor recommends that they go there. And the story is about her, her, her time trying to adjust to this, almost being forced to go there and uh, really at this time in her life, later years, trying to adjust to to this new place that she's living in, this new landscape, the fact that her husband is um, not doing as well as she thought he might at this time in their life. And she befriends a little albino boy, um, which I, you know, I found interesting being in a desert, you wouldn't think you'd find a little albino boy living in the desert. And so he's sort of misplaced there too. And um, it's the story about a little story about their friendship and what she learns about herself in the process. So there's that one. I think another one that I love is um, Marta del Angel. And that's a story about uh, a woman, a Mexican immigrant woman who marries an American man who leaves her suddenly and what she's going through in the aftermath of that and thinking about why she came, her father, the stories of Mexico, and um, the, the desire to come to California for a better life. And what did that really mean to her? That one, I think that one was particularly special because it was the first one that was picked up by a big magazine at the time, Hispanic magazine. So it was, it was exciting for me to have it published in that, in that magazine. 
And then let's see. Yeah, that, I guess those two for now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, what do you think it is about short stories that draws you to writing in this style? I've always loved short stories. I used to read them quite a bit. I still do. I mean, some of my early influences in that department were Alice Munro. She's a master storyteller still writing. I think she is. I think she may, maybe she just retired. Um, William Trevor, Chekhov, of course, Richard Ford, Raymond Carver, Grace Paley, and Hemingway, of course. I, I always loved this short story because I felt like it, it just, um, it, it's just like a snapshot of life lived. It, it kind of captures like a singular moment in a character's life and highlights something about them. It's like you don't see the whole film, but it's rather the, like the photograph. And I always found that really interesting and always enjoyed reading them. Do you find that, um, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to say that you like use your work as a psychologist, you know, like uh, you're taking your, your clients' lives, but obviously you, mm-hmm. see pe- you see people and you get to hear stories and do you, do you get ideas for stories from sometimes talking to people in your professional capacity? Yeah, you know, that's never happened to me. That's funny. I mean, I keep it really separate of course I'd never want my 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 clients to think I'd write about their lives because I would never do that right. it's very important that it remain confidential and no you know but I think the thread that I found because I said why did I become a psychotherapist after you know really being involved in writing and literature and you know one I needed to make money so you know I, I needed like a, a a more dependable career um after years teaching you know I, I was at a crossroads I was either going to have to go and get a PhD to really get a tenured position or, or maybe go back to school and study something different to have something a little more stable for myself. So I was always interested in psychology. And, you know, I've looked back on that of late and really recognized that um, they weren't too different being a, a therapist and writer, really, because I think it's all about being really interested in the human narrative. Like I love listening to people's stories. It never, I never get tired of it. People say, oh, how could you listen to people's problems? It's not a problem for me. I really enjoy being a part of that. And I also think there's a moment when you're writing that there's these aha moments where, you know, suddenly your character reveals something deeper about themselves that's exciting to write about. And um, I think the same is true in being a therapist. You know, you're listening to people and suddenly you get this little kernel that unlocks something, helps you unlock something with, with the client to, to get to a better place in their life. Um, so there's, there's something very similar about it. So I don't really, I don't really use any, anything from my work as a psychotherapist other than I think that, that sense of the psychology in characters, and there's a lot of that. When you're a writer, I think you, you observe human nature so there, there's that that connects the two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, you're, you're listening to people's stories and, um, and as a writer, you're really trying to get into the heads of your characters, you know, even though they're fictional, you're still trying to find out their personalities and what, what, what their motivations are. Right. Um, I was smiling. Right, were- exactly. I was smiling when you were talking because so often authors tell me that, you know, the characters will do something or say something that maybe is not what the author was expecting. And I think people who don't write or who aren't familiar with that might think, well, that makes you a little bit crazy, but you are both a writer and a therapist. So you can, t- <laughs> <laughs> so I can say you're not crazy. You know? <laughs> no, it's so true. I mean, I think writers will say that all the time, right? You're, you're writing a character you don't always know where it's going and suddenly they surprise you. It's as if they have a life of their own. And, you know, I get surprised when I'm, when I'm doing therapy all the time, you know, suddenly someone will say something and you're just like, Oh, right. Yes. That just, that just revealed something uh, that might be really helpful or a breakthrough. Uh, And I, I find the same process with writing. You know, you could be stuck in a story and not know where to go. And then suddenly your character does or says something that you didn't, you don't even know where that came from. And it just unlocks a new avenue to go. And that's always really exciting. 
I can imagine it, it would be um, a little uh, a little disconcerting at first. When it, you know, like the first time it happens as a writer, I, I would probably feel a little disconcerted myself, um, just because you yeah. think you're in you think you're in control. <laughs> right, right. But it's also fun because I think it means that the characters really come to life. And I mean, there's to me, there's nothing worse than the blank page, you know. Like, what am I going to write? Like, I have an idea, but I don't know how to put this into words. And so I think then when the character really comes to life and takes off with it, it's almost as if it's writing itself. Um, and that's, to me, far less excruciating. <laughs> you write it. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, <laughs> did you do any particular types of research for this collection? No, not really. There, I mean, it's funny, the inspiration for a lot of these stories um, is just something grabs my attention. I would say there's one story called Grace, and I can remember that moment particularly. And it's not unlike a lot of the other stories, but this one I really remember. I was working at Bart's Books, shout out to Bart's Books, in Ojai, California. Um, it's one of the only outdoor uh, bookstores around and, and it's still going strong since I think the 60s. And it was, I think it was modeled, strangely enough, I'm in Paris after the Paris book stalls. Um, but I, I, was, I was working in there for a year and I remember sitting at the front and seeing a mother come in barefoot with kind of pulling along her son, a little boy. And I just, there was something about the look of kind of stress and desperation in her face but but her still wanting to take her son into this bookstore, um, despite whatever she was going through, it just struck me. And I was watching them, and they were sitting in a, a, a children the children's booth, and he was, you know, going through all these books and completely immersed. And she was smoking a cigarette and tapping her foot and just looking very strained and stressed. And so I started to imagine what what their lives were like what 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 did they do after they left the bookstore what was going on in their lives and that's where that story came from so sometimes it's just some somebody grabs my attention by some way that they look or something i see and then i imagine a story around that person um yeah it takes people watching to a whole different level it's time for our second break, but as we go into that break, uh, the last answer got me thinking, pondering, what have you. I love to people watch, especially like in airports um, or just when I'm out and about. And lately I've been people watching from my husband's office window because his office is not that far from the beach where we live. And there's a lot of tourists here. And so I like to kind of guess where people are from and what they're, why they're here. Are they vacationing? Are they visiting their family, visiting family? Uh, I like to make up stories about them. So how many of us do that? Do you do you make up stories about the people that you see or kind of speculate as to what they're doing when you see them? I'm just curious. Uh, you'll have to let me know what you think about all that. And if, if you do make up stories about people that you see or speculate as to their, their life story, what, what what's going on in their lives. Uh, let's go ahead and take that break. When we come back, Linda will be talking about some of the autobiographical elements within her stories. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author Linda Fader. Let's return to that interview. Are there um, auto, particularly particular autobiographical elements besides location uh, when you write? Not not often. There, there are probably a few stories in there that are loosely autobiographical. There's one called Horse Rope Mud Rain. And it's the story of a friendship of four uh, teenage girls at a stable, a uh, horse stable. And it's sort of a coming of age story about the moment when boys entered the picture and took the focus off of horses, you know, little girls and horses, there's a special bond. And I had that experience. I had that experience of, I, I, I was lucky enough to live across the field from a stable that was run by a college. And it provided me with this wonderful childhood of, you know, cleaning stalls as my first job and working with these, uh, these women who are still my friends today. But we grew up together and we were able to, you know, you could lease a horse from this place for like $60 a month. I mean, something unheard of today. So it was just an outdoor lifestyle that I was lucky enough to uh, enjoy. But this group of friends, we, we grew up there on the stable and I just remember the first time that boys entered the picture and I remember not liking it because my girlfriends were changing you know? <laughs> and the focus wasn't so much on horses anymore in our friendship, but it became like this outside force of, of, um, you know, the other sex and reckoning with that suddenly as you're coming of age. So that story is, is loosely based on, on that experience. Um, and the others, you know, I would say more, it's about people I encountered in California growing up and imagined stories about them, um, but they're not really autobiographical. Okay. Are you working on um, a collection or, you know, some short, short stories? I can't speak <laughs> um, now, or what, <laughs> are, or what are you writing right now? So I'm not, I, I moved on, I'm working on a novel right now. And um, that's really different for me. I've always written short stories, but this subject matter just lent itself to something longer. So it's a very different process for me. It's much more um, outlined and I'm following a roadmap, but I don't know where I'm gonna go completely, but I, I have some idea. So, and I, I don't know if I can say too much about it yet because it's pretty early in the game, but it is about a famous architect uh, in California. So there's some historical fictional elements to it, but mm -hmm. I think I'm trying to push it more uh, toward fiction, you know, mm -hmm. a, a fiction in a novel, of course. So, yeah. So that's what I'm working on right now. So I'm kind of heavily into research and I've, I've done some writing on it. And mm -hmm. um, when I get back from Paris, I really planned it to jump in. Yeah, that has to be is so different just because not only of the word count, but also just the, you have to you have such such a limited amount of time to kind of create that character, get readers invested in the character. And then for a novel, you've got so much more space. Um, can you talk a little bit about just the differences for you in that that process, not only of plotting the, the story, but also creating characters and, and the differences in short stories versus novel? Yeah, well, I think short stories, I think they, they capture a moment. You're looking for that little moment, um, that singular moment, really. Uh, and I, I would say, to me, it's like a short story is a photograph and a novel is more like a film. And I'm trying to think that way as I'm, as I'm writing it. And I've, I've never written a novel before, so this is going to be a first for me. And short stories have always been my thing. But... Um, I think there is a longer amount of time to develop the character. I'm interested in seeing how that goes and also kind of reaching some sort of conclusion and ending in a novel, whereas I feel short stories I could often leave open-ended. And I like that about short stories, that they don't have this really clean ending, um, but just kind of leave you, drop you in that moment and come out. Um, whereas I think in a novel... I think really outlining it and, and having a, a destination to get to is, is what's helping me through it. Um, 
and and I, I would imagine that developing the characters would would become a part of that, really developing them and um, seeing what they do from one chapter to the next and having a longer amount of time to linger with them and understand them. So I'm looking forward to that. So that made me think, has there ever been a character with, when you're writing a short story that has, even after you were done with the short story, that has kind of stuck with you that made you want to develop that character further into like a longer story or even a novel? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, there, there have been, there have been characters. And, and I would say some people have read some of my, my stories and said, oh, I want to know what happens to them after this. <laughs> and so once in a while that's come up, but I, I really haven't had, maybe, maybe there's one, there's, there's one story called Joint Custody and it's told in two parts. The first part is from the mother's point of view as she's um, sending her daughter off to live with uh, her her ex-husband in another state. And she's got the summer to herself for the first time in many, many years. So it's, it's her story about leaving, getting ready to leave on the plane after having put her own child on a plane to go back and see um, uh, her father. So it's told from that point of view, her point of view. And then the, the, the companion to it, the second part of the longer story is told from the daughter's point of view as she's traveling to meet this father that she hasn't really seen in quite a few years and what that's going to be like for her as she first meets him, greets him, sort of sees him with a different eye now that she's a, a teenager and looking at him not with that a fairy tale look of a child at, at, a, at a parent, but as now becoming a woman and sort of being a little more critical of him. Um, and so, but that, that could have almost developed into a novel. I, I could see that, but I just really didn't have the interest to, to be honest. So I left it there. Yeah. Um, obviously you've been writing for a while. You've taught writing. Um, is it something that you always wanted to do? Did you grow up wanting to write or did that come later in life? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I was thinking back to that cause I, and I knew you might ask me that and I, I was, um, I was thinking back to one of my earliest inspirations. I can remember being a little girl re reading the Laurel, Laura Ingalls Wilder series, Little House on the Prairie. Do you remember those? I don't know if you remember. Those. Oh, I loved those. I read them a million times. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. Right. Yeah. So I, I remember being a young girl reading those and just eating them up and fantasizing about, you know, being this girl, this writer who could write these stories about living on the prairie it was had nothing to do with my suburban life in California, <laughs> but I found it so interesting. And I remember I have some writings um, that I've looked at that I found somewhere in a box that I where I was trying to be her and writing these stories as a little girl, trying to copy her. Um, so that's my earliest sense of being a writer. And then I remember there were just in elementary school, there were just a few teachers who who had said something to my mother like, oh, she, she needs to be a writer. I guess I wrote some things that they felt, um, they felt, you know, gave me that, that bent. But um, so I do remember that was my earliest sense of always wanting to. And then I think, you know, you, you move on into adulthood, you go, go to school. I was a story editor in um, Hollywood for a while. So I've always been, in, I wrote for the school, the college newspaper. I went to college in Los Angeles. I, I wrote a lot of critical, uh, cultural critical uh, reviews for them. And then went on to work for a production company in Los Angeles. They did a lot of uh, movies of the week for television. And I became a story editor. So I was reading screenplays and trying to find material for them to use and did that for a number of years and then went to get my master's. But I think, so I think in some ways I've always been interested in writing, have worked in it in one way or another um, since I was, yeah, since I was quite young. It is time for our final break of the podcast. Um, but I really love when authors tell me that they have stories that they wrote when they were in elementary school, that they, then they still have those stories, like their parents saved them or somebody saved them. I just think that's sweet. And it, it must be 
such a wonderful thing to look back on as a published author and maybe I'm projecting here I don't know but uh and maybe they look back on those stories and cringe but I hope that they look back on those stories and realize that that is you know part of that journey and and it was one of their first steps in becoming a published author I just think it's a wonderful memory and uh something to have and to cherish uh let's go ahead and take that final break stay tuned you're listening to the GSMC book review podcast and I will be right back Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple, it's simple, such a sad song. The one that... Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Linda Fader. From your experience then, and um, as, as a, someone who's taught writing, do you have advice for aspiring authors? Yes, I, I would say read a lot. I think that's something I generally hear a lot, but I can't stress that enough, right? Um, when you read, you really, you really learn about mastery and try to read a variety of things. I like to switch between nonfiction and fiction, and um, it's it's you know it's a nice it's a nice way to get a wide breadth of things and find an author you love and just read everything you can by that author. I would I would do that as well. Just all of a sudden, okay, I want to read everything D. H. Lawrence read and just read, devour everything, and you really get a sense of their style and how they put things together by diving into it in in that depth. Um, and then it also helps to find friends, um, other writers that you can share community with, share your writing with, particularly in the earlier days. I think that, that sometimes that's important to get feedback. Does this make sense? Oh, why not? Um, and get that feedback from, from a group of really good people who are going to give you constructive criticism, not just shoot you down. Um, and, and I think that that's helpful too. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so you mentioned you've mentioned a couple of authors that you've read uh, that you read, but who are your who are your favorites, your go to genres or authors when you're reading for yourself? Oh. Yeah. Oh, let's see. I love novels by Francine Prose. I think her novels are wonderful, and uh, Kazu Ishiguro, he's great. Um, Jonathan Franzen, he's a current writer, wonderful. Um, I also read Nicholas Del Banco, Rosellen Brown. I, I, I learned from them, so I always like to see what they're doing. I went to the University of Houston in um, creative writing and um, knew Mary Robeson. She's a master of the short story, Rosellen Brown. I still, I still read them when things come out. Um, and let's see, I've been reading recently and switching between Freezing Order by Bill Browder. He, it's a true story. It's kind of timely right now. He's a man who ran a, a, ran a fund in Moscow and he escaped uh, Vladimir Putin's corruption. He's still working very hard on that, but really interesting man. Um, and that, that's a nonfiction book. And I just finished Landslide by Susan Conley. And that, that was a fun novel about a family living in Maine um, as the fishing industry is starting to wane for individual people, fishermen, and the impact on the family. Um, but yeah, I like to switch between nonfiction and then read something fiction. And some of my go-to novelists, I think I mentioned, and, um, and then I always try to jump into um, short story writers too, see what they're up to. Um, look at some of the journals, like Story Journal or what's going on at the New Yorker when I have the time. 
<laughs> <laughs> do you uh, prefer to read um, book books or ebooks or do you, what, what's your preference there? I know, right? I never thought I'd like ebooks, but boy, I like them. I, I especially, especially when for traveling, traveling. <laughs> yeah. right? Right. I've got my iPad, and I've got, I've got um, a book that I'm, I'm using for research on that, and and I've got uh, Landslide, the one I just finished was on that. So it's nice to be able to pick it up and travel with it. And that's, I, I use it for. So I do both. I still like to buy books, and. I'd say I'm probably 50, 50 now. So I'll, I'll have books that are in, you know, book form. And then I'll put ones that I think I want to travel with on my iPad or ones that I want to read at night. Cause I can backlight it. So I don't disturb my husband <laughs> by turning on a book light. I tend to be one yeah. of those people who wakes up at four in the morning and needs uh. to read something to go back to bed. I get a lot of reading done that way. So, um, yeah, the back, backlit books are, are a wonderful invention. They don't disturb anybody. Well, you, uh, uh, my husband's the one that wakes up at four in the morning, so you guys would get along well. You could read it. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you don't want him turning on the light or the book light, so right, these exactly. backlit books are great. Yeah, exactly. Um, in terms of your internet presence, uh, if you have a website, if you could share that, as well as any social sure. media that you're um, active on. Yeah, so I'm, uh, my website is www.lindafader, F as in Frank, E-Y-D-E-R.com, lindafader.com. I'm on Instagram at lynda.fader, and uh, I have a Facebook. It can be nice to, to communicate with readers. It is a nice way to do that. I will say that. And other writers. I've, I've found other writers this way, too. It's been a lot lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we have covered um, a variety of topics today, Linda, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you want to highlight or bring up in terms of the short story collection or writing anything that we haven't talked about? Uh, I guess I would say just to encourage readers to look at short stories and essays. It's not always, they're, they're sort of the the, the little cousin of novels and, and big nonfiction books these days. Um, they don't tend to get as much notice, but yet they can be wonderful, particularly in today's um, lifestyle where we don't always have a lot of time. You can sit and read a story or an essay and, and uh, polish it off in, in, in just a moment on the train or going to work and, uh, and you've, you've entered somebody else's life or, or thought for that moment. Um, without a whole lot of time commitment. But no, I, I think sometimes th these forms can be forgotten. They don't get as much press or play. And so just nice to remind people that there's lots of uh, golden nuggets out there in these forms. I always have um, phones on or books on my phone because my, my Kindle app is on my phone. So if I'm waiting in line for something I, I can read while I wait in line and I would say that short stories are perfect for that because you can actually read you know whereas you might just only be able to read a chapter of a show of a novel you could read one whole short story while you're waiting in line for something yeah it's so true right in today's life when we've when we've got so much demanding our attention it can be a nice little moment like a little yeah. meditation in a way yeah well, thank you so yeah. much for taking the time to talk to me, but not only taking the time, but also talking to me while you're in Paris. I really appreciate <laughs> that. Um, and for talking to me about your short stories. I just really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you once again to Linda for taking the time to speak to me, taking the time while she was in Paris. We had uh, a little bit of some scheduling conflict. We had to reschedule because I was having computer issues on the day we were originally scheduled. And then we scheduled for this past Wednesday and uh, they had repairmen come to the uh, the apartment they were staying at in Paris and uh, they were very noisy. And so we ended up re not not fully rescheduling, just pushing it back an hour. But it was one of those kind of comedy of error things in terms of scheduling. So I'm glad that we finally found the time and that we got to do it and that she was able to talk to me from Paris. Always cool. I love to collect as, you know, I do. I collect locations of where I've talked to authors and I'm getting a list of countries that I've, I've spoken to authors and when they're in those countries. So eh, everybody needs a hobby, right? 
back to back to thanking Linda. Linda, thank you for taking the time to talk to me about your short story collection. Those of you who've been listening for a long time will know that I have a complicated relationship with short stories. Like I just there's never enough for me. I want to know more about the characters. I want to get, you know, if I, especially if I fall in love with a character, I don't want that short story to end. Um, and so I really appreciate when I could talk to authors who write short stories. And I really appreciated Linda's last answer about, you know, giving short stories a chance and, and not just reading longer novels or what have you. Um, because there is something to be said about those those movie trailers or as one author put it you know the the things that you see out of the corner of your eye just those glimpses and it's it's definitely a a the skill to be able to write a good short story so i will continue to um i I hope that my relationship with short, short stories will continue to evolve and i appreciate that i continue having authors on the podcast who write short stories so uh, thank you to linda thank you as always to all of you for joining me Especially even when I sound like Elmer Fudd or whatever I sound like these days with the crazy nasaliness that is going on in my voice. Thank you for putting up with that. If it's not COVID, it's, you know, the inevitable sinus infection and or bronchitis. <laughs> I frequently sound like this, don't I? Anyway, I hope that you will join me on the next episode. We will have a Uh, middle grade historical fiction book um, written by a father-son duo. I will be speaking to one half of that duo. They're both named Robert Skeed. Um, So I'll be speaking with Robert. I'll be speaking with Robert the Younger from the next episode about that middle grade book. It is called Links to Liberty. It's the third in a series of um, stories that involve twin brothers during the American Revolution. So join me for that interview. In the meantime, if you are a fan of this podcast, please, as always, like, subscribe, follow, uh, so you can be the first to find out about new episodes. Also, if you haven't done so already, leaving a review really helps the podcast, so start or written, either way, helps us to get the podcast out to more listeners such as yourselves. I hope that you have um, a wonderful weekend planned. It is Memorial Day in the United States, so you might have a long weekend coming up. Hope you have something fun planned, but regardless of what you're doing, I hope that that weekend involves plenty of time for you to get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www gsmcpodcast.com Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.